Paul Mason will in a moment will speak to a Spanish MP who speaks with the government on foreign affairs about all this and the world famous economist Martin Feldstein. But first, we wanted to show you a clip from Professor Feldstein's appearance here on Newsnight 14 years ago in which he made some remarks that are starting to look eerily prescient. There's a school of doom who think the continent is on the verge of its worst nightmare since the war. Now, one of the doom in chief is the eminent American economist Martin Feldstein here at Harvard. We're about to pop in on him and get him to outline why things may turn nasty. I think if you have more conflict, if you have more disagreement, if you have countries that feel that they are under the thumb of others, or under the thumb of a process that they can't control, and yet they are, in their own mind, sovereign countries, the temptation to pull out will be very strong. And who knows just what the response will be from the center. Well, 14 years on, we can speak to Martin Feldstein again. He's in Berlin. Very nice to have you uh, back, Martin Feldstein. And you predicted this, uh, what is happening now, almost to the word. Has it taken longer than you expected? Well, I don't think I had any timetable in mind, but I think it was clear that trying to force a common monetary policy and a single exchange rate on such disparate countries was not going to work. Where do you think this is going? Well, frankly, I'm quite worried about Spain in particular, uh, not just because of the riots, but because uh, of the, the power of the individual regions uh, the new plan that the European Central Bank announced in which they will uh, buy Spanish bonds as long as Spain sticks to a plan that's been approved by the uh, European Stability Mechanism, uh, I think that's not going to last. I think at some point Spain will uh, depart from what they've promised because of riots or because of local regions and at that point uh, the ECB will have to decide. Do they stop buying the bonds and allow interest rates to soar, or do they keep buying them and weaken the credibility of the entire program? Either way, I think it'll be bad news for making progress in Spain and for Spanish bonds. Do you think we're actually going to see political breakup within Spain, more autonomy for some of the regions like Catalonia? Well, you know, they have a fair amount of fiscal autonomy already. And while they're talking about pulling out, I think the odds of that are still pretty low. Uh, quite interesting listening to the bond analyst in Paul's piece a, a moment ago saying that calculating risk now in southern Europe is, is like it used to be for the emerging markets, that they, they, they're taking into account all sorts of things they never used to have to worry about. Well, in the emerging markets uh, in uh, East Asia or Latin America, they could always take the option of devaluing their currency and allowing their economies to recover. Uh, Spain can't do that. So as long as the euro remains as strong as it is today, we're going to continue to see large international uh, deficits, large current account deficits in Spain, and that's going to frighten the bond markets. Uh, you're famous, of course, for this sh formula that showed us originally the, the, the measure, if you like, of globalization of capitalism. Do you think we are now starting to witness its collapse? Uh Globalized uh, capitalism? No, I don't think it's collapsing. I think what we're seeing is that financial markets within Europe, which were supposed to be uh, strengthened uh, as a result of forming the euro, that they are, are rapidly breaking down and going back to national markets because people are afraid uh, to uh, lend, banks are afraid to lend 
uh, to borrowers in other countries. So we're seeing a breakdown of credit uh, mm. within the euro eurozone. And what, what do you think happens to the eurozone and to the euro? I mean, if we're, uh, if we're inviting you back in another 15 years, what would be your predictions of where we'll, where we'll be, or let's say in one year? Well, you know, it is very hard to say. There, I think it was a mistake to enter into the euro in the first place, but it would be very costly in many ways, economically very costly, um, politically costly, uh, to turn the process away. Uh, we still could see some of the countries like Greece, which are in much worse shape than Italy or Spain, and we could see uh, uh, Greece leaving the Eurozone, not immediately, but perhaps after the German election. And uh, do you think that we will see a push to more extreme kinds of government as a result of this social unrest that we're seeing now, if they can get rid of a Rajoy government or get rid of a government in Greece as we've seen? Well, the one government that seems to be working very well in the peripheral area is the Italian government where experienced bureaucrats, not elected officials, have been putting together a program that has been uh, reducing fiscal deficits in a meaningful way. Well, it's very good to talk to you, Martin Felstein. Thank you very much indeed.